Back in the PRR Doodlebug series, I skimmed over making instructions, citing that a proper video could take more than just one. Today I will document the process with a model large enough to show something scalable, but small enough to take less than multiple videos. This 1 to 48 scale PRR G43 gondola has featured in some very old uploads, though I have long since taken it apart. I can't take the whole car and just start making steps. I need to break it down into manageable chunks. And this first step, the strategic part, often feels the hardest. I want to make submodels such that each one manifests an obvious studs up build order, but also such that connecting the assemblies occurs in a buildable sequence. Sometimes I have to compromise. For example, the two suburban tank engines have a lot of studs down construction. I tried to clean up the model before getting into instructions, but I often have to make more fixes while breaking it down. Here I removed some old parts and modified the bogies. The tiles around the turntables should reduce some of the wobbling that irritated me on the PBM-70. Afterward, I grouped the sides, ends, and bogies into submodels and left the chassis and frame as the main model. Note that I only grouped one side and one end. The various faces actually have rotational symmetry, making the right side the same as the left side and the front end the same as the back end. For any part that gets duplicated, I only want to make steps once and do a 2x for the other copy. I did temporarily group both bogies because I didn't want to bother switching the wheels for the right part after importing from LDD. If I make good submodels, making the actual steps should happen naturally. Here, the sides, the ends, and the floor consist almost entirely of stacked plates. I did make a mistake at the macro level. If I assemble the sides and the ends as two X's, the sides must include these brackets. Otherwise, I would need to bend the sides to insert the ends, and I try very hard to avoid those kinds of situations. I had to do the underside upside down, and one snot greeble sits between some plates, so I turned it into a submodel. The bogies might look more complicated, but I can break them down just as with the main model. The gondola has two identical trucks, and each one has two identical side frames. Again, I only intend to make one set of steps and two X it. I left a blank page at the very end because I want to flip the model over in the last step. Now comes conceptually the easiest part, but practically the hardest part, making the individual pages. Studio does not do a good job of resizing and positioning the callouts and content in a legible way, and I have to organize every step manually 
to make all the elements visible. I set the page size at 1366 by 768 to get an appropriate aspect ratio for this long and narrow model. A larger resolution could give more space, but would also increase the file size. How much I need to rescale depends both on the size of the build and the size of the page. Changing the view parameters for one step changes them for all subsequent steps or until another change occurs. Mainly, I need to zoom in when building submodels and zoom out when reverting to the main model, but I can also turn small assemblies into callouts instead. Sometimes I need to rotate things as well. I'm sure someone will tell me the proper way to make a 2x, but I actually want to show how I can't move the text to the edge of the page thanks to a studio bug. I need to restart the instruction maker after changing the page size in order to use the whole area for text, which I will do in a bit. As mentioned, I flipped the model in the last step so that the build does not end upside down with the bogey attachment. After fixing the two X's, I also changed the outline color and weight. The default red works well for most of my models, but yellow on a red model seems much more appropriate. All I have to do now is export to a PDF and perhaps make a render or two for the video thumbnail and or the rebrickable thumbnail. According to the screen capture files, I spent about an hour documenting this 382 piece model, but often time increases exponentially with part count. I do try to stick to what I think LEGO would do in official instructions, but I tend to cram a lot more parts into every step compared to those. I want to document a model, not necessarily create a building experience. On that note, this is the end of the video. Uh, these instructions are available for free on Rebrickable. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day.